Welcome to another Anne of the Week. Today we are delving once more into the weird and wacky with this week's animal, the Hammerhead Worm. Like the previous Anne of the Week, the Trilobite Beetle, this name is just a nickname. Really, they are called Bipalium, and this is actually the name of their genus, with there being many different species of them. It is obvious where the nickname comes from though, with the members of the genus all possessing the strange hammerhead reminiscent of hammerhead sharks. There are many different species of hammerhead worms, and can therefore be found worldwide within the tropics and subtropics, as they love humid climates. They are actually an invasive species in many countries such as the USA, where they have been found outside of the tropical to subtropical regions, in places like New York and other far more northern states where they really shouldn't be. They come to these areas from plants that have been imported from South and Central America. They are also a big problem in Europe, and can cause quite a bit of damage to gardens and greenhouses through their eating habits. Hammerhead worms are carnivorous predators that feed upon earthworms or mollusks like snails depending on the species of hammerhead worm, and therefore damage the habitats that they invade by killing off key decomposers which will over time mean the soil becomes less and less nutritious as earthworms and snails are no longer there to break down a lot of dead plant material and return nutrients to the soil. They are actually quite brutal in the way they feed. At first they will track their prey and find them, at which time they will stick themselves to their prey item using the sticky mucus they can secrete. The prey will most likely not like this and flail around, so the worm uses its strength to overpower its prey and hold it still. It then secretes enzymes and tetrodotoxins onto the helpless prey that then start to digest the prey outside of the stomach, at which time the worm will then reach its throat out of its mouth and suck up the liquefied and rather dead prey. These worms are truly amazing in almost every way, and their strange reproductive habits are no different. These worms are hermaphrodites, meaning they are both male and female at the same time. Depending on the species of hammerhead worm, reproduction is either sexual or asexual. In the worm's sexual reproduction, eggs are fertilised by gametes that have been shared between them by secretions. The eggs are then laid, which then hatch, and there you have it, multiple genetically different hammerhead worms. Asexual reproduction is interesting, as it seems to occur far more than sexual reproduction. The way they reproduce with only themselves is much like how other worms do it, by literally fragmenting into separate parts that then develop into fully functioning copies of the original hammerhead worm. So far we have asexual and sexual reproduction, secreting enzymes and tetrodotoxins for digestion, strong muscles to hold down prey, and the ability to invert its throat out of its mouth to devour prey. So what other interesting adaptations do they have? Well, they have what has been called a creeping sole, basically a strip on their underside that is covered in little cilia that along with the slippery mucus they produce, allow them to move. They have been observed to be mostly nocturnal animals, hunting and moving around at night. This is clearly due to their main prey item, the earthworm, also being nocturnal and only coming to the surface at night. The hammerhead worm also likes it dark, humid and cool, so the night is the perfect time for them to move around. These strange worms are part of the family Geoplanidae, which contains many other flatworms very similar to the hammerhead worms, but who don't have the hammerhead that makes them so special and distinct. The family is comprised of four different subfamilies. These three I won't try to pronounce, and the hammerhead worm subfamily of Bipalinae. These worms have no natural predators, as they are very toxic to other creatures that may try to eat them. They are not deadly to humans though, as they cannot produce enough toxin to kill a human, but they are still not edible and could make you ill if you were to eat one. That goes the same for other mammals like dogs and cats. They are the predators in their ecosystem, and so have nothing to fear from anything around them. It is their prey that have to look out for them. These are one of the few Animal of the Weeks that perhaps need to be killed by humans. In areas where they are an invasive species, they can cause a lot of damage to the environment due to how they decimate earthworm populations. They don't seem to be under threat from humans in their native habitats, and are more of a nuisance to gardeners than anything else. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.